All right, let's take a look at the engine screen. We're gonna start with the uh, critical altitude. This is the altitude at which the engine can maintain full power. So I used to fly a Columbia 400, it's a turbocharged engine, it's good for 310 horses, but because of that turbocharger, it could hold that 310 horsepower of output until it got to like 12,000 feet or 10,000 feet or something like that. So you can just enter a, uh, a critical, <laughs> Sorry, having problems with the mouse today. You can enter a critical altitude there of say 12,000 feet. It's how high the engine can hold its power. Um, and then for jet engine, we're in a Skyhawk here. For jet engines, this will be a temperature rather than an altitude, which is just kind of how they do it. Um, throttle available at max lever, one engine failed. So the uh, old Eclipse jet had something where if one engine would fail, the other engine could go up to a higher power output. And so maybe you get some extra juice or something like that if an engine fails, and that'll run your N1 up above 100%, your N2 above 100%, your manifold pressure. Everybody might go over your standard uh, limits there. Um, throttle available at max level, uh, max lever, all engines running. This should almost certainly be one, however. If you're allowed to get more than 100% N1 or more than 100% power, you can put in you know another five or 10% here or whatever. Although normally one is what I would enter. Throttle available at max reverse lever position. Well, I don't think engines are gonna spool up to 100% and one in reverse, but feel free to correct me. Uh, put the value in there that's appropriate. High and low idle engine ratio. So basically for reciprocating and jet engines, I just said that idle is a certain percentage of your maximum thrust uh, fuel flow. And um, I, I put in numbers that seem to make sense for the engines that are common. Um, your typical CFM 56 jet engine, probably a Pratt & Whitney PT6 engine for the turboprop and a Lycoming or a Continental for the recip. Um, and so if you find these engines idle too slow or too fast, either low or high idle, feel free to adjust these numbers. Now, for uh, turbines, uh, at least turbo props, you can have a high and a low idle. There's a red knob over on the right. Uh, I'm trying to get my hand in screen here. A red knob over on the right, which is mixture, of course, on the reciprocating engines, but it's a that's low or high idle or shut off on the turbines. Um, and then a whole bunch of uh, check boxes. Let's see, throttle on jets drives N2. Probably your throttle on a jet is gonna drive your N2 and your N2 is gonna drive N1. But it might be that your throttle drives your EPR on a jet and doesn't drive N2, the little turbine that spins in the core of the engine, but instead the engine pressure ratio of the forward fan. The engine pressure ratio is how many atmospheres of pressure the forward fan of the engine is pressurizing. Um, Jet engines have been known to operate either way. Uh, engine controller prevents overboost, yes or no. Prevents ITT over temp, EGT over temp. Just, you know, just limits you can have in the full authority digital engine controller. Um, whether the thing can go in reverse or not, always use high idle in flight. Some airplanes do that automatically. Shut off fuel when the prop control is at minimum. I think in like the Garrett engines, you'd pull a throttle, the prop control to minimum, and that would shut off the fuel, which seems weird to me as a PT6 operator. Um, Let's see, a whole bunch of check boxes. I'm just not gonna read every one to you. I don't think that's gonna be the best use of your time. You can read those check boxes yourself. Uh, Ram inlet pressure recovery. Oh, this is a good one. Even on turboprops, as they start to approach, say half the speed of sound, the Ram air effect really starts to pressurize that inlet. And uh, let's see, for my evolution, it delivers 0.6, 60%. So I found that the engine uh, inlet in my single engine turboprop recovers about 60% of the ram air pressure to deliver to the engine. And I found this by climbing up to high altitude at a really, really low speed, like just above stall, well, uh, significantly above stall, but a low speed, as slow as I wanted to get, then lower the nose, and let it accelerate without touching the throttle. And I watched how much the power increased as the airplane sped up. And yeah, sure enough, the power, which is torque times RPM, and I have indicators on both, the power built up as the airplane sped up, even though I was not adjusting the throttle, and the power built up because the ram air effect was coming in there. So 60% is what I get in my inlet anyway. Um, Turbine and recip exhaust to pounds of thrust, uh, uh, horsepower. Oh yeah, so apparently these World War II fighters, some guy emailed me one time, he's like, well, what about the thrust from the exhaust axe in the P-51? And I responded, oh, that's nothing. There's no thrust in the exhaust axe, that's nothing. 
And he goes, really? And he sent me a paper that like totally proved me wrong. Uh, yes, there is thrust from the exhaust axe on a P-51. And um, let's see, there, and there certainly is from a PT-6 uh, as well. Looks like 0.1 is the value delivered by the PT-6 engines, about 50 pounds of thrust when cruising at 500 horsepower. So it's 0.1 for a PT-6. I don't know what it is for a reciprocating engine. Depends on your exhaust system. You'll have to look it up and figure it out for your plane, I guess. Uh, Feathered pitch of prop, blue knob full aft. You pull the prop controller full aft, and then what is the prop? Feather to. Beta pitch of prop, throttle at idle. For these PT6 turbines, you pull that throttle back and you go into reverse pitch. We call that beta. This is for slowing down after landing. And then what is the pitch there? That's probably a negative number. Reverse pitch of prop throttle, full reverse, and that's the full reverse. So in other words, what happens is, here it is, you pull the black knob back on a turboprop engine, at least a PT6, it hits a gate, you lift it up over the gate, you pull it back more. As you pull it back, the prop goes to beta pitch. The engine's still at idle, okay? Engine's still at idle, but the prop goes to a negative pitch. If you keep pulling the throttle back, it literally starts feeding more fuel into the engine to speed it up faster and goes even to more into reverse. Now you got full on reverse thrust. So beta is idle fuel, but with a flat or maybe slightly negative pitch. Reverse is fuel getting dumped into the engine and the prop really going negative. So the beta pitch of prop throttle at idle and reverse pitch of prop throttle at reverse are located uh, here accordingly. Um, minimum governor RPM and engine RPM. So if you pull the blue knob back, the question is how low an RPM can you govern before you pull it back so much the prop feathers completely. And TPE engine flight RPM. Oh gosh, I wish Philip Munzel was here. I tell him to come in and tell this one to me because he, he coded this one. Uh, typically 96% on a TP engine. Okay, fine. Minimum engine running speed. Oh, if you get much slower than this, I'm just going to say combustion's over and the engine just rolls to a stop. Uh, jet engine, maximum allowable thrust, afterburner thrust increase. Compressor area, that's like how big the area is on the compressor. And the latest version's a plane maker. This is in a different screen, though. You will soon see this in another screen if you don't already. Uh, reverser area, this is how much drag you get when uh, you pop the reversers, which certainly matters on the ground. And uh, if, if in flight, it matters in flight even more. Of course, we don't typically deploy thrust reversals in flight. There are some airplanes that can actually do it. Uh, go to low afterburner above this throttle and afterburner engage delay. So if you get the throttle above a certain point, I'll automatically bring in the afterburner with maybe a little delay. And fan at 100%, uh, fan RPM at 100% N1. That's just so we can animate the fan spinning. If you have a little data ref for how fast this, the fan is spinning. And I literally have such a good jet engine model now that if you're in a high bypass airplane sitting on the ground, the engine not running, the wind just kind of blowing through the nacelle is enough to actually see the fan go and turn around. And that's not because I added it in as a hack. Oh no, that's emergent behavior of my engine model. And then rockets. One, ignition. We have liftoff. Uh, thrust at some different altitudes, what sea level, vacuum, and at some optimum altitude, and the uh, nozzle exit area, which we use to find how fast the exhaust must be coming out to give that thrust. So that is the basic uh, engine screen.